Hey everybody, well it's tutorial time again. We're going to be working in Maya 2020 and we're going to be talking about sculpting tools. Yes, Maya has sculpting tools. Now maybe you're working with ZBrush, but what you probably don't know is that the sculpting tools in Maya are getting better and better every year, right? So let's check it out and see if this will cover it for you. Here we go. This video has been made possible by RenderHub.com, the premier site for selling and buying your 3D related content, such as 3D models, HDRI files, sound effects, textures, print ready models, and much, much more. Okay, everybody, well, you saw the title of the video, Maya Sculpting, Yes, No, or Maybe. Well, what's that all about? Well, the thing is, if you're working in 3D, then chances are that you're going to be working with the ZBrush. And if you're not, then probably you will be. For the simple reason that ZBrush is basically uh, king when it comes to digital sculpting, right? But in all fairness, maybe you don't have 800 bucks lying around to get that software. Uh, maybe you got a student license in Maya and you need to do some sculpting and you simply don't have ZBrush. Well, for that reason, I'm going to do this uh, quick little video. I'm going to get you guys started in sculpting in Maya, and then it's up to you to decide whether you want to invest time to get uh, more acquainted with all the individual tools, right? So this is uh, intended as a quick introduction, and uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get started. Now, before we bring the objects in, uh, in the top corner here, you have some data where it says uh, verts and edges and faces and so forth. How do you get that up there? What you're going to do is you're going to go to display, a heads up display, and then click on poly count, right? And why? I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring in an object, or in fact, two, and I'll explain why. So we're going to go up to create, we're going to go to polygon primitives, and let's take a sphere, and then I'll go to create polygon primitives again, and we'll do cube. I'll take my sphere, I'll hit W, I'll move it over like this, and now we have a sphere and a cube. All right, so what's that all about? Well, if we look at the sphere right here and you see the edge flow, it's all coming together in the top there of the sphere. So all these vertices are basically bunched together. Now for proper sculpting results, what you want is your topology to be as even as possible, right? And that's not gonna cut it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the sphere and we're going to take the cube instead, and we're going to turn that into something that looks a lot more like a cube, but more evenly faced, right? Now, that brings me to this information up here. Right now, it says next to faces that we have six faces in our entire Maya scene, uh, and uh, there's no, there are no faces selected right now. Now, if I click on this cube, it will say six in the entire scene and also six selected, which makes sense because I have the cube selected. If I had two cubes, it would say 12 in the scene, six selected and so forth. That's how that works. Now, why is that important? Well, as you are sculpting, you want to have a higher subdivision level because that makes your detail better and so forth. But you need to keep an eye on that face count because if that goes out of control, Maya might crash, you lose your data, you lose your model, and that's not good, right? Okay, so now that we have that, let's see if we can turn this into something that looks a little bit more like a sphere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to Mesh and we're gonna go to Smooth. Now, as we do that, we get this kind of hybrid thing, which is kind of, a, you know, uh, something between a cube and a sphere, but we have the option to increase sub division level. So let's go with five, right? Now, as we do that, we get something that looks a lot more like a sphere. We have a face count of 6,144, which is okay to start with, all right. Now, in ZBrush, you would see uh, much, much higher numbers, but they are not necessarily poly faces. They are more points in space, but that's a whole different story, right? So this is what we've got to start with. Now, let's look into our sculpting tools. Uh, we're going to go and make sure we're in the modeling menu here, and then we're going to go up to the third tab where it says sculpting, and I'm simply going to click on the first one, right? Okay, as soon as I click on that, what you'll see is that the uh, sphere turns gray, and then down here, it says sculpting on polycon, uh, polycube space one in the perspective mode, which is all correct. Okay. So as soon as I hover my mouse over this, you see a circle with a little uh, thing in the middle, right? Now, before we get into this any further, 
If you are going to sculpt and you have the possibility to do so, then use a pen display, right? Like a, a drawing tablet or a pen display. You can do this with a mouse, but it's uh, far from ideal. So if you have the option, do that, okay? All right. Now, um, when you want to sculpt, there are a whole bunch of things you want to know. You want to know how to make your brush bigger and smaller, how to make the strength of the brush uh, higher or lower, how to invert your brush, all that kind of cool stuff, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the top corner here and we're gonna take the second symbol from the right, this guy, and that is a tool settings, right? Now, looking at tool settings, what you see here is that we have the option to change the brush size, okay? So this is the brush size, that circle. If I go and set this to, let's say 0.3, you'll see that suddenly that's a lot bigger. But there's a shortcut. You can go in and you can hold down the B, the B for ball, right? Hold down B, left click and drag. And as you move that up and down, you'll see that it will become bigger or smaller, right? So let's get a quick shortcut to change the size of the brush and I'll make it fairly small. All right. Second one is the strength of the brush, right? Now, right now it's set to 0 0.02, but if I hold on the M key, the M for mic, right? And again, hold on M, left click and drag, you'll see that little line going up and down. That represents the strength of the brush, right? So you can have a fairly small brush that is very powerful, basically something like this, right? Or you can go in here and pull down M to make it less strong right and then go in here and do that and you can see a big difference but it is there trust me you can see it yeah okay all right so that's b for brush m for strength how about inverting it well if you want to invert something right and let me just increase that strength so again we'll hold down the m right let me just bring that up a little bit like that yeah and then what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the control key. So we're just going to go in here and basically cut that in there. So without the control key and with the control key, which will give us, oops, which will give us something like this. All right. Now, what if I made something like that and I think it's a little bit too crude? What you can do is you can go in here and you can smooth it out, right? So, and when you want to smooth something, you hold down the shift key. So hold down the shift key and you can go in here and kind of flatten that out or even flatten it out completely, right? So just hold down shift. Okay. So just to recap, B for brush size, right? M for strength. If you hold down the shift key, you can smooth. If you hold down the control key, you can invert, right? Oh, see, okay. So let's see, what else is important? Well, if we look at here, the buildup, you have the buildup of the brush. Right now it's set to 46 something, right? So if I go in here, there you go. Let's bring that down to, let's say four. Hardly anything, right? Let's say we do 80 very, very strong, right? So it is exactly what you think it is. It's the build up, right? Okay, now steady stroke is uh, kind of cool. You see that little line going on there? Let's say you want to have a certain line going on. And if I turn that off, I will have to use my mouse to kind of manually create that curve. And that's kind of hard to do, right? So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna take that. And I think it's called lazy mouse and she brush, not sure. So without, I would get something like this. Let me do a little bit more build up here. Let's do 80 and strength, we'll do 0.1, okay. Okay, so we got that, right? Now let's turn on steady stroke and uh, it will basically just follow that line. You see how perfectly smooth that is? Okay, pretty cool. Right, so what else we got? We got fall off. This is kind of neat. So you see that this, if you look at the side of the uh, the stroke that I just did, you see how it goes from the surface here up and make that curve right there, right? Here you basically have a couple of presets you can choose from. So if you want it to look different, now you see that the side looks very different. Let me just smooth that out a little bit. And that's, you can manipulate that, right? So you can uh, basically have curves to choose from. 
Now, stylus is a very important one. Stylus is basically your pen that you're using with your pen display, right? And um, if you're using a pen, then the, um, the strength of the brush is basically determined by how hard you push on that brush, right? And what you can do is you can have a minimum brush size and a minimum brush strength. So if you're not putting a lot of pressure on it, you at least get that, right? Stamp is very cool. Let's say you created an alpha image in Photoshop and you want to basically use your brush as a stamp. So you click on it and you will get an image of whatever that stamp is, right? You can import an alpha image here and then you can use it as a stamp, right? Okay, what else? Uh, let's see, let's go back up a little bit because I think I forgot to talk about symmetry. Yeah, right, so symmetry right now is off, right? Now, if I turn that on, let's say object X, right? I get my circle, which is my brush or represent, representation of my brush, and I get a little black thing on the right, right there, right? So if I were to uh, sculpt something right now, I would have one at both ends. Now let me just go in here and file a new scene. Okay, so now we have a clean scene. Let's go back and open this guy up. We're gonna go up to reset tool and there you go, right? Okay, so the symmetry. We'll go with object X right now. Now as I do that, you'll see that I got two black dots moving around and because I can't see my circle, I think the size of the brush is very large. Now right now it's set to 25. I'm gonna bring that down by holding down B for brush, left click and drag, and bring that in and in and in and in. And it's so big that it's probably easier to just go in here and type in one, which is still pretty big, 0.3 maybe. Yeah, it's better, okay. And then strength, the same deal, we'll set that to one, and there you have it. All right. Now, when I'm in here, I got my brush on the right and I got my symmetry on the left because I chose X, right? So if I were to go in here and make a couple of ears, something like this could happen. If I wanna change that from left to right in the X uh, direction, what I would do is go in and take Y, for example, for uh, vertical and so forth. But I'm gonna turn it off right now. Okay, so we talked about that. We talked about steady stroke. We talked about, uh, yeah, the stylus. We talked about that. Uh, okay, then we get stamp and display. Stamp is for the alphas, we talked about that. Display, that is a very important one. Now, and I'll show you what I mean. We have this uh, orient brush to surface here. Now, if I move my brush over the object, right, you see the circle moving in front of the sphere, and as soon as I hit that edge right there, and the little dot in the middle hits that edge, it disappears, right? Now, what I basically want is for my brush to wrap around the surface of the sphere. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna turn on Orient Brush to Surface. So now it kind of hugs the sphere like this. And that's way cooler and way more accurate. And there you go, right? So these are basically all the settings that you need to be aware of. Uh, let me just go in here and change that size a little bit. And then here you have a whole array of objects you can play with, right? Different things you wanna do. Um, and like I said, I'm not gonna go through all of them because you'll get very funky things. But um, you know, let me know if you want me to do more individual in-depth tutorials of each individual function, okay? So just a quick recap. Uh, so brush size, hold down B to increase or decrease. Strength, hold down M to increase or decrease. Hold down Shift to smooth, right? Hold down Control if you want to invert the brush. And like I said, this is a bit much, but you get the idea. And then here, the second symbol on the right, that is your tool palette to tweak all these settings if you like, all right? Now, uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you want to be notified, hit that little bell thing. That said, thank you so much for checking out my video and see you guys next time. Bye.